how to win Jack and Jill's. Oh boy, what have I done? Listen, I can empathize with you 100%. I have been in your shoes. I've been outraged. I've wanted to boycott. I understand what it's like being in a Jack and Jill and not getting the recognition that you thought you deserved. It's one of the most frustrating things ever. You get in there with a group of people, you don't know who you're gonna get, especially if you're a follower and you're like, this guy doesn't even know what he's doing. I'm so much better than this situation right now. And if you're a leader, if you go through the whole process of practicing and preparing all your moves and then you nail that stuff and then all of a sudden it's like, what, six? Six? Here's the thing, I'm going to have to burst your bubble. Jack and Jill's are subjective. It's much like the movie critic industry. Typically, critics will judge a movie based on what they desire it to be versus judging the movie based on what the director and the writers actually did. The movie's so deep and complex. Totally agrees with my political outlook of the universe, how things work. Dude, you literally gave Catwoman an A+. That's the worst movie of all time. A lot of times, this is what it feels like being judged as a participant in a Jack and Jill, especially if your taste in movies are different. I'm not saying that this is a good or bad way of judging, but it definitely is an objective. So if this is the dilemma you have to work with, how in the world can one win a Jack and Jill objectively? What's the formula? There are some objective concepts that every single person uses to judge. We keep them in our minds and we all communicate them different ways. In order for us to tap into those concepts, we first have to recognize that there are two, I need to stop doing that for my British audience, sorry. There are two separate people that you are trying trying to reach in every competition. The judges and you have the audience. Now in my opinion, the audience is the one that can give you the most active feedback on how well you're doing. Now sometimes they're gonna scream for their favorite people anyway. Whee! which happens a lot. But if you come out there swinging and they don't even know who you are and you're not even on home court and you nail some crazy awesome move with your partner and the social media views are in the thousands and people are commenting that they thought you should have won and organizers are calling you about coming to teach at their event, you're winning. And even for the judges, they may look like James Bond on the outside, but on the inside, they're taking notes trying to get as many moves as possible. Now there are three separate concepts that if you can nail them, you're guaranteed guaranteed to be in the top three. Now, many other instructors and different people and different judges, they'll say all kinds of different ways to explain these three things. This is the simplest way that I've explained it to students after judging a competition. If you can do one of them, of course, you'll get third. If you can do two of them, it's pretty obvious that you need to be in the top three. But there's only one way you can get that top spot, and you've got to have all three of them. The audience and judges know it, but you might actually have a louder response from the audience. So hit the jump below where we dive deeper into this subject to give you these concepts to help you have more courage and confidence while you do Jack and Jill's. If you like what you've seen today, make sure you subscribe below to get more information on swing dancing, swing music, and swing history. If I don't get a chance to dance with you in person, I hope to see you in class online. Take care.